I'm Kara. And this is She Smokes Too, a series highlighting women who love cigars. Today we're smoking with Angela Yu from Grand Cathedral Cigars. Hi. She's a, a recent Tampa transplant and just an all around awesome chick in the cigar industry. And who better to, to talk to than somebody who owns a cigar shop? Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited. Tell this is so cool. I've seen this on uh, YouTube before, so it's kind of cool to be here with you guys. And yeah. Especially now that I move, I live here permanently. So, Well, this is our first interview in a while, but we think you're a good first one to start with. Um, if you want to start by telling us a little bit about how you got into cigars, mm. your journey to becoming a retail owner. So I have been working with cigars for... 12 years now since I was 18 years old and I just turned 30 not too long ago <laughs> so for me it's really kind of been my lifetime I mean I know I'm not like a second or third or fourth generation cigar maker but for me since I was 18 that's what like 40 percent of my life right. so <laughs> that's pretty much all I've known other than going to school and um, the cigar community has really become my family um, there's some cigar makers that I've known since I was 18 and they've you know just seen me grow up and some cigar reps in California now they're retired so I've really just grown up in this industry and having I think like most people who own brick and mortar cigar stores they first are consumers and they smoke cigars and they enjoy the industry yeah. and then eventually they'll become a brick and mortar cigar shop owner. So I opened up my first store in 2018 in San Diego, which is called Lore Puffer, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. And um, Grand Cathedral just opened up uh, January of this year. So it's officially eight months old now. Nice. Why? I don't think I know this story. Like, why did you decide to move to Tampa? We never were looking for a place in Tampa. Okay. We always wanted to come to Florida. It was either Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, Arizona. Those are all like low... Uh, tax tax. states for cigars. Not not California. No, <laughs> our, our, our tax was like California yeah, It goes between like sixty Strange. and seventy percent. You know, and yeah. it drops like one percent. They're like, wow, we just want to let you know that it went down one percent. You're welcome. I'm like, great, one percent. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, we've been trying to get out of California for I mean years now, and I always told Nathan we could open a cigar shop wherever we want, mm -hmm. and you know. Um, it'll be exciting and we'll make the best of wherever we go. Right. But for me, it's not just opening a store. Thank you. For me, it's also like, we're going to live here. Right. So I'm going to make a life out of here. Right. So I don't want to move somewhere just for work and not enjoy where I live. You, know, you want to. Yeah. Be. Like the money could be great and all, but yeah. for me, I want to relocate here and move my mom here, my dog. So it has to be somewhere like where I can call home. Yeah. So I was never going to go to Texas, mm -hmm. you know? Arizona's too dry, and Tampa, Florida, um, reminds me the most of California. You mm -hmm. know, blue skies, water, everything is focused on, like, being okay. outdoors. Right. So we just looked at a bunch of different zip codes, and I remember it was raining in San Diego, and Nathan said, here's, like, a list of 12 zip codes. Go find something online. Uh -huh. And we've always had a joke, which was, I would love to open a cigar shop either in a church or at a fire station. Right. And we found this cathedral... And I was just jokingly saying, like, how cool would it be to open a cigar shop there? But what are the chances that someone will let you open up a cigar shop inside a church? A church? <laughs> so the very next day was a Monday. I left a message for Steven Schleeman, and he ended up calling me back. And he was like, hey, you know, my favorite cigars are Tiro Fuente, Queen Bee. <laughs> you know, the landlord, Lance, he loves cigars, too. So everything just, like, fell into place. And then we got on a plane a week later and signed the lease. That's awesome. So when you realized you were in Tampa and you can have a cigar shop. Yeah. In a, in a, in a it's it's incredible. Here. <laughs> this is like the greatest city <laughs> to own, not even just a cigar shop, a business, business. in general. Yeah. Because everyone is so supportive here. You know, the local law enforcement, the city officials, um, the different Heights communities. Everyone is just so Welcoming. supportive. Yeah, especially of brick and mortar stores, which you don't see in California. We were talking before you came about if there was a difference in the culture at your two stores. The different oh, huge, huge culture difference. Um, I think mostly because in California, because cigars are so expensive, it's a certain demographics of people that smoke cigars. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't make a certain income bracket, it's really hard to go have a cigar every single day because it gets expensive, especially mm -hmm. after drink, cigar, drink, right. cigar. In Tampa, I feel like it's just normal and it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And I notice it because a lot of retailers that come to our store 
especially on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, one of the first things that they'll say is, wow, you guys have so many females that smoke cigars here. And we uh-huh. get females that smoke cigars not because their boyfriend smokes or because right. their husband smokes. Like, they'll go out on a Friday night, sit at the bar, and just smoke by themselves. So uh-huh. that's one of the bigger differences that I've noticed. And then there's a lot of younger people here that smoke cigars because uh-huh. I think their family ties. I mean, we'll, we have people, one of the guys that work for us, I think his grandmother used to be a roller here. If you talk to anyone who's lived in Tampa for multiple mm-hmm. generations, someone in their family has a has tie to a it. Tie. Yeah. yeah. So it's really like a way of life here. It's yeah. not a hobby. It's just life here. So I love that, you know, you say that there's like women there that mm-hmm. are just coming by themselves. Yeah. Because that's our experience. You know, mm-hmm. we have so many women in our company. Right. We're familiar with it. And so for us, I think there's more females than males. Yeah, that I think in the home office we do. For yeah, because sure. yeah. if you look at the JC Newman, your guys' like like annual picture that you yeah. guys have on the front staircase, yeah. it's mostly, it's mostly females. Women. Yeah, I know. it's funny. And so it, we don't think anything of it, but then we go into smoke shops when we're working with our salesmen mm-hmm. or visiting territories, and we're like aliens. They're like, yeah. what are these girls in here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I don't. And that's kind especially of, when you roll in like eight girls yeah. deep. You know, yeah. when we like do one of our girls' night crew. Yeah, right. And you know. We have eight or ten girls who come in to a shop and start smoking. And Which it we should actually turns heads, that's for sure. Talk about reviving that and switching mm-hmm. it to Grand Cathedral. Yeah. Come on by. Yeah. yeah. This weekend I had an engagement party. Oh, really? Which I thought was, well, you guys do weddings here, too. <clears throat> uh-huh. So, like, you wouldn't see that outside of Tampa, I feel yeah. like. Like, a normal bride wouldn't say, hey, I want to go get married or have my engagement party at a cigar-themed place. But here it's just so common. Yeah. And it's not, like what you said, it's not like an alien thing or anything, mm-hmm. so... It's cool. I like it. I like being in Tampa. And what's your experience been like being a woman in the cigar industry? Um, kind of like what you just said. When you go to cigar shops, you don't think like, oh, I'm a female going to a cigar shop. Right. It's just what you do. So I've been working around cigars for so long, I don't really think anything of it. Mm-hmm. Just because I just feel like I'm another person that owns a cigar shop. Yeah. Um, for me, I think the hardest thing, though, it's always uh, I hear a lot of other people say like oh maybe she has her store because she's a female Mm -hmm. and that's one of those things that they always fall back on right but i want to say well i have a store because we're aggressive retailers and we're really passionate about this industry right so i guess that's really more of it do you ever feel like people don't think that you're the owner that you you're just oh yeah i get that all the time (laughs) that's i guess that, that that's a common thing i i hear um a bunch of different reasons or right you know I'm just the face of it, mm-hmm. or and I'm, I don't have any involvement with the store. So there's a bunch of rumors out there. Do you think Angela's just the face? Should <laughs> 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 the plywood <laughs> building the Grand Yeah, Cathedral. we saw that place being built. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, a mm-hmm. whiz mm-hmm. to when people underestimate you and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, you're just a woman in the shop. Like you clearly right. aren't the owner. You get to kind of hear like people's honest feedbacks and opinions because yeah. they just don't think anything of you. Like we run into that at events. Yeah where we work events mm-hmm. and we're both marketing directors for the company, but they think that we're just like hired models. Right. Like, you know, like we're <laughs> just, just to show we're just up hilarious. and like, like people in yeah, and, they're and, like, and they'll be like, oh, are you really smoking that? Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, what? Like it's not a prop. And, yeah. But it's just so funny the things that people right. feel like they can say to you when right. they think that you're just a model or something, you know, like yeah, not no, affiliated with the company. Yeah. It, it happens all the time. In our store particularly, like most of the females that work there, they're very strong, opinionated, nice. um, and they all smoke cigars and whatnot. So they can, I mean, our, our bar manager, Nicole, she smokes cigars regularly, mm-hmm. even at home. Mm-hmm. So she can hold her own cord and mm-hmm. she can she can school guys about cigars. So, And that's one thing. I, when we hire people, even if they just work in the bar, we want them to be educated in cigars. So mm-hmm. they're not just pouring drinks. They can at least have a conversation about tobacco and cigars and whatnot. So. And I feel like if you work in the industry, even if you're not on the cigar side or mm-hmm. on the bar side, that you end up becoming part of the culture and you end up smoking just because it, it's right. really like intoxicating. It just kind of yeah. sucks you in and it becomes part of your life. And um, it's a good like after time. It's, yeah. mm-hmm. it, it, and they go hand in hand, right? Drinks mm-hmm. and cigars, socializing and the community is so great. 
And one of the coolest things I find about cigars is no matter, if you smoke cigars, no matter where you go, you're going to run into someone who you're connected to by like one degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether you've worked with someone or you have friends who know someone, like everyone is connected because the community is so small. Yeah. And, um, you know, so few people, I think they say like, what, 1% of 1% smoke cigars. So the chances are when you walk into a cigar shop, you're going to run into someone, know someone who knows who someone. Knows someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool because, you know, I used to travel a lot for work, too, and I would always make it a point to go to a cigar shop because that's the one place where I didn't feel like that mm -hmm. I was by myself yeah. or lonely. I could just pick up a conversation with someone. So. Yeah, it's the great equalizer. Yeah, that's what we always talk about at the office. Yeah. It's the great equalizer. You could be sitting next to a shift worker, mm -hmm. and you could be, like, the CEO of a company, and you'll find something to kind of relate over yeah. and bond over and... I think that it's what makes the interesting the the industry so mm -hmm. interesting and so sticky. Like, mm -hmm. You know, like people just kind of get stuck in it. Yeah, and, right. And because it's cool and there's so much passion mm -hmm. and it's so. But you do get like walks of life. Yeah. yeah every absolutely. every every corner of the world, every job in the world, every, every you know age. demographic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you get every type of person, which is really neat. Yeah. And I think you said earlier that you kind of grew up in the industry, and mm -hmm. Karen and I can relate because we're around the same age, and we started right, right out of college, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of all we've ever known. So yeah. it's, I it's couldn't imagine not working with cigars. I know. I can't no. imagine no. it. Because well, it's, it's not just work. It's like, it's it's fun. It's yeah. hobby. It it's is. your friends. It you know? is. And like it people across manufacturers and smoke shops become friends, yeah. and you build this community it's so funny, like, because we joke that, like, once you're in, you never leave. Like, you just, if you leave a company, you go somewhere else. Maybe you go right. work for a shop or you work for another manufacturer. Right. But, like, you'll see those people again. They'll be yeah. back. Like, well, before, yeah. I know, I feel like I've heard a couple stories about this, but before you lived in San Diego, mm -hmm. before you had Lord Puffer, you mm -hmm. lived in the Bahamas? I lived in the Bahamas yeah. for, like, three, two and a half, three years. What were you so, doing there? I have a partner named Nathan, mm -hmm. if you guys know him. And um, he has a green thumb. He's always had this dream to grow tobacco. So, and we met, this all happened at a cigar shop, right? Like we always say. Um, we met, he met a guy who knew a guy <laughs> who owned a farm in the Bahamas called Abaco. And it was a citrus farm at the time. And he wanted to convert it into a different type of crop. So he gave Nathan the opportunity. He said, hey, I have this farm. If you guys want to move here, you guys can do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. So we said, sure, let's try and grow tobacco. And uh, we got on a flight, and we ended up living there for about two and a half, three years growing tobacco. Uh, we also opened up a cigar shop while we were down there um, right across from the Marsh Harbor Airport, which isn't there anymore after the hurricanes. It mm -hmm. blew everything away. But we were growing tobacco down there for probably two and a half years, three years. Um, the only problem, it grew great tobacco. The only problem is the labor is too high there. Um, so minimum wage in the Bahamas is about five, six dollars an hour. So you can't really compete yeah. um, with countries like the Dominican Republic or Nicaragua. Right. And to get someone who operates machinery in the Bahamas or a skilled laborer, you're looking at 10, 11, 12 dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So it just wasn't sustainable, which is why we ended up coming back. And the same issues that we run into in the States. Yeah. yeah, just the high. It's super, high super wages. expensive. And then on top of it, the taxation in the Bahamas is really high to get any type of products or fertilizer or drip tape or machinery. I mean, the makes sense. You're on an island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and then to get the stuff repaired, right. if anything breaks down, you're looking at months just to get a part. So mm -hmm. it, island it, time. It, yeah, yeah it, wasn't, it wasn't sustainable, but it was fun. It was one of those things where you don't get offered the opportunity yeah. to go yeah, live in the experience. Bahamas. So for me, I was like, I'll take it. Did yeah. you guys sell the tobacco to anybody or were you using it for yourselves? Or No, we we never sold it to anyone. It was um, curing the whole time. Huh. So we never got to the selling stage. But we opened a store down there and it was fun. I got to do things I would have never yeah, had the awesome. opportunity to do. So What's the hardest thing about growing tobacco in your experience? Um, like, Where did you really struggle outside of just like Bahamian struggles? Uh, in the Bahamas, we just had no infrastructure. Mm. So I think the biggest struggle we ran into was setting up the infrastructure, yeah. irrigation, um, getting the raw resources out there. Because mm -hmm. once you're there, you could find laborers if you're willing to pay for it. Right. But it was just getting the materials to the Bahamas itself was just really difficult. 
um, you know, to get drip tape, we had to come to the U.S., put it in a container, yeah. and then it would sit at customs for God knows how long. So the ability to find raw material was the hardest, I think. Yeah. yeah. So you've been to the Dominican. Have you been to Nicaragua yet? Yeah. You've been to Nicaragua? Yeah, what, like three, four times? Something like that. Three times, four Have times. you been to Penta yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. I'll see you down to Penta. <laughs> I haven't been there. What preference, Dominican versus Nicaragua? Ooh. Well, it depends. Yeah. I feel like it's a tough question. Because they're so different. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like Nicaragua is definitely more remote. Mm -hmm. So you get really immersed within the local yeah it's like a small community. town yeah mm -hmm. and it's so different versus the dominican republic it's really for me it's like going to mexico right like another city um especially if you go with the fuentes because it's like the red carpets rolled out yeah like, there's like beautiful restaurants yeah. and i remember I don't know, maybe like two trips ago we went to this restaurant it took like two hours to get there but it was at the very top of the mountain mm. and it was like above the clouds i don't know no, it wasn't camp david mm. it was um I don't remember the name of it, but it was, I, I thought we were like going to Mount Everest. Like you just keep on going and going and going. But at the top, it was beautiful. And there was this like outlook on the edge of the mountain. And it was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So it, it's, it's so different, Nicaragua yeah. versus Dominican Republic. And then you have the beaches in, you know, Dominican Republic. You go to Puerto Plata, Blue Jack Tar. Right. The people just treat you so great there. Yeah. So. But then there's animals in Nicaragua. There's, I know. You know. Horses on the side of the road. Lots of cows. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I love them both. Yeah. So, yeah. All the leather yeah, shops. So. I love the leather shops yes. in Italy. That's always yeah. so fun to explore. I have some good belts and yeah. handbags mm -hmm. in Nicaragua. Great leather, great steak. But then you get authentic Italian food in the Dominican <laughs> yeah. from Paolo. Exactly. <laughs> so. And just crazy Paolo in general. And nothing compares to Chateau Fuente. That's like. Oh my gosh. It's heaven on earth. It is. It's so it's picturesque. I know. It's so like, like you can't believe it's real life, but it, it is real life there, and it's so that's like something from a magazine. It is. It is. It is. It just kind of appears out of nowhere. Right. Like you're in this rural area, and then all of a sudden there's this like. I think the most amazing thing are like the little details, and you know that's yeah. Ciro and Carlito, but like every little thing, there's a meaning behind. There's it. a meaning. Like if there's a hole, there's a meaning behind that <laughs> yeah. hole. Not or if intentional. There's like a discolored window. There's a meaning behind mm -hmm. the discolored window. Yeah. So it's like literally they that's like Bobby Newman's big joke is like they literally paint the rocks like and where <laughs> do you go there's, right. a, meaning there's right. a meaning behind the rock. they paint yeah. rocks you yeah. know or like the tips of the wood fence right like they paint the tips of that and we always talk about that whenever we get to go to Chateau Fuente uh -huh. without fail we're sitting in a rocking chair right. at the Hemingway house we have a cigar mm -hmm. we have a glass of wine I'm like, wow like this is our life right now this is so like, cool this is yeah this is work like yeah how lucky are we? It's just beautiful and peaceful. Have you guys ridden the horses? No, I, I don't. have. <laughs> I <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> Did you ride the horse? You rode the, the horse. horse. Yeah. I don't do horses. No, I don't, I don't like horses. I don't want to get on anything that big with a brain. Okay, that's my rule. <laughs> and also, they don't listen to me. They can sense my fear. And they just, like, so they will just take start going wherever they and want. And you're so little, too. The horses. <laughs> and they'll be like, take control. Tell yeah. where to go. And I'm like, please take me. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> and then it, like, will take me back to the barn and sleep or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm guessing you've ridden the horses. Oh, yeah. Every time I go, I go ride the horse. Yeah. Have you? I rode the horse, yeah. You did? Yeah. The first time I didn't know if I was allowed to, but I mean, the guy, like, you know, the yeah, guy that always like, walks the horse. Yeah. Like, Can I ride the horse? So, yeah. My first cigar, I remember it so clearly. Uh, first of all, I wanted to be cool because everyone was smoking cigars. Right. So I'm like, oh, I got to smoke a cigar like that. So you're in the industry or before you got into the industry? Um, that's when I first started. Okay. So I was living in downtown, and there was a cigar shop across the street from where I lived, and it was the only place that I could go in underage because everything else was bars. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to hang out here every day. Um, and this is my spot. Yeah, this is my spot. <laughs> I camped out in the corner. I was one of those people, you know how every cigar shop has someone who camps out? <laughs> I was a camper at the cigar <laughs> shop. So 18-year-old Angela Yeo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember everyone was going to the top of the Marriott. There is a uh, cigar friendly place called the altitude and i wanted to be cool because everyone was smoking cigars so i just grabbed the first cigar that i saw and it was a rocky propel edge and no one bothered to tell me that you have to take the foot band off uh, and like i didn't even think about it so you smoked the foot band i smoked the foot band <laughs> it was a rocky patel edge sumatra i remember it so clearly what did that taste like <laughs> well, it was burning a lot and i was like <laughs> is this, this the 
Oh, you burn them this much? But I didn't know you were supposed to take because no one else took their bands off because their bands were right. at the top because they weren't smoking the edge. They were smoking, I don't know, like a Padron or something. So, no one helped you out? No one? No, they like, alone? they, no, they like totally left me to sink. That's so awesome. that yeah. was my first cigar. I'll tell you, it's my first cigar story. <laughs> that, that was my first cigar. Did you like it or were you like, what? Once you got past the paper? Like yeah, I, I, at first I didn't like it, but it was the only place that I could go to. Yeah. So I just like sucked it up and yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to continue It's like learning to like beer in college. Yeah. You, you don't know? like your yeah, first beer. Like, yeah. No one can say they like, like their first the beer. The kegs are all that's free. So yeah. you just got to suck it up and learn how to drink beer. So I, I remember I was like, how do people do this? And um, I didn't really know what I was trying to taste. I was like, well. And no one like guided you through it? No, I was just puffing just to puff. I was one of those puffers. At least you weren't inhaling. Is that how you got your name, Lord Puffer? <laughs> no, Lord Puffer was actually, Lord Puffer was our lawyer's vineyard name. And it was always a joke. If we ever open up a cigar shop again, we were going to take his name, which is Lord Puffer. And then we opened up the cigar it's shop. A great, so it's a we great stole shop his name. name. Is there anything more it. California than your lawyer owning a vineyard? I, <laughs> I know, and he's a huge cigar <laughs> smoker too. So we're like the complete oxymoron of what it is to be California. So it's okay. But. I think you know when you've really gotten into cigars, if you work in the industry, when you start smoking on like personal time mm -hmm. and you get like the people in your life involved in cigars right. and you only want to go places where you know you can smoke. Right. And, but that inevitably happens everyone we had a girl start recently in our department and she had never smoked before and now i'm seeing like on her social media she's at the beach with cigars she's at the pool with yeah. cigars is it carissa like, yeah. that's amazing I oh yeah that. i remember little carissa yeah, yeah. she so. came over for your birthday yeah. that's right <laughs> yeah so it's just so funny to see how it you know slowly works its way into your but it grows on you yeah it's one of those things that grows on and you. and there's never pressure like not here anyway like yeah. right you, when people come and they get hired we're mm -hmm. not like you have to smoke cigars it's more like you're going to be around it from time to time right. so you have to be able to tolerate that right but we'll never pressure you there's no expectation mm -hmm. and it really is you're just around it and you're like you well, just pick cool. it up. Yeah. Like, I want to... You feel, you feel... No one puts pressure on you, but you feel pressure, like, being in the industry, like, to at least try. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's just, like, that culture, though. You're just, like, it looks fun. Like, Everyone's just, like, doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that looks like it goes great with that drink. But you're right. Having... No one pressures you. Mm -hmm. No one's just like, oh, you have to smoke mm -hmm. cigars. Thank you, Angela, so much for coming and being, I guess, interviewed by us, but really just chatting. Thank friends. you for having me. This is so cool. It. I know. I feel like we should do this once a week because this was yeah. lovely. Yeah. I know. You guys can come over. We yeah, need to come. We're right over. down the road. We're right we'll down the road from you guys. They sent us home again, so we'll, we'll be work. back. We'll you know what? Well, actually, we should. We'll come what are we doing? Work. What are we doing? And at we home? have a huge patio, so you guys can social distance if you guys need to. Yeah. It's outside. Yeah. So. It's lovely with koi. Yeah. Are your koi doing well? Are they yeah, also? I love my koi. I have an <laughs> obsession with my koi. I love them. My little goldfish, they're like huge right now. I just bought more fish. Then I have turtles. My my goal for like next month, I've already like went on Pinterest and I found like different designs that I want. I want to make a turtle like drying area. Because my turtles, they need a place to like you have sun. Turtles. I have three turtles. You added a turtle, turtle <laughs> drying area. I want an area for them to like hang out in the sun. I don't really have a nice area for them. Like a little turtle deck. Yeah, so I need to build a turtle, a turtle deck. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what I want to do. <laughs> I went on Pinterest and I saved like all these different turtle deck ideas, like turtle patios. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's absolutely what we're calling it, the turtle, the turtle patio. Deck. I have turtle, turtle, patio. turtle patio designs that I want to work on. Are you going to have like mini Fuente umbrellas? Went to patio umbrellas for the turtles. Well, so my my pond in San Diego and my fish tank in San Diego, I threw the Carlito bobblehead in there. So I thought it would be like a cute idea, but I didn't know the paint wasn't waterproof. So his face just started peeling off. <laughs> I kid you not, but I didn't want to waste the bobblehead because his head, you know, it didn't break. It was just the color. So I used mascara to fix his eyebrows. Stop. I need Carlito to see this. this. I need to see this, Carlito. I don't think he knows this. I, and I use like concealer to do his paint on his face because oh his whole face just like came out in the water. So I like repainted it on. That sounds get you a new one. Horrifying. <laughs> I just didn't want to waste it. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. It's perfect for Halloween. It's coming up. <laughs> so I definitely use mascara to paint his hair. And, you know, it's kind of creepy, but. Okay. Well, thank you for joining on us. Yeah. <laughs> on that note. Thanks All for right. joining us. If you're in Tampa, if you live in Tampa, if you visit Tampa. Visit Angela at Grand Cathedral. Come on, Absolutely. Visit amazing shop. It is. We love it. Yep. And thank cheers. You cheers. 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 Cheers to good friendships thank from the cigar guys. industry. Thank you.